this isn't just help us capture a biblical vision for our kids. It literally is multi-generational. Happy New Year. I am so excited for you to be encouraged by Josh Mulvihill today. But first, I want to tell you about our sponsor, CTC Math. Our family uses and loves CTC Math. So if you're looking for a great online math curriculum, visit ctcmath.com to sign up for your free trial. That's ctcmath.com. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast and happy new year. Happy 2022, you guys. This is a new year and I am so excited about that. I hope you are too. I, I just stand in awe of the things that the Lord is doing in our family, through our family, and in our world. I know that sometimes it's so hard to look at what's going on around us and to feel hopeful, but there is so much hope in Christ. And I constantly have to remind myself that this is not our home. We have an eternity with our Savior to look forward to, and there is no greater thing um, than preparing for that eternity and preparing our kids for an eternity with their Savior. And so I hope you guys had a great Christmas. I hope you had a great break. Maybe you're still on break and just trying to figure out how to get back into the swing of life. Maybe you are new to homeschooling and you decided over the Christmas break that this was something that you were going to jump into. And so wherever you are on your homeschool journey, I am so glad that you've decided to join us today. Um, You know, as we were sitting and thinking through our schedule, we have several guests coming on. We're super excited about and we're, we were looking at some different topics, and um, a, a couple months ago, I had uh, Dr. Josh Mulvihill, who you're going to meet today, and this week you're going to get to know him. He sent me a book, and this actually came about because Sam Sorbo messaged me, and she said, you've got to hear about this book. You need to meet this guy, and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to trust you, Sam, and so sure enough, she introduced the two of us, and it's uh, this book is so amazing, and I'm so very excited to kick off this new season. We're in season five of the podcast, and I truly cannot think of a better way to kick it off than with this guest and talking about this new book that he has out. And so, uh, Josh, it is such a pleasure to have Mm -hmm. you with me this week. Welcome to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Well, it's really great to be here, and thanks for the kind welcome. And um, it is uh, a joy to say hi to everybody in 2022. Yeah, amen. We, We made it. We made it to another year. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Um, If you guys are watching this, whether you're watching it on YouTube or on Facebook or simply listening, would you do me a favor and would you take a second to like and share this episode? I really want to get this message out, especially this week, Um, but every week, of course, you know, we always have a new and exciting guest on, Um, but like and share this and share it with your friends because that is really what is going to help grow the homeschool movement. It's what is going to bring encouragement to parents. And, um, you know, we, we just are, like I said, just in awe of what God is doing. And so we would love your help with that. Um, but without further ado, Josh, introduce us to yourself and your family, your ministry, what the Lord is doing with you. Well, I'm, I'm coming to you from the great state of uh, Minnesota, and we actually got our first snow today or this week, so it's kind of late. Uh, I think the most important thing to know about me is I am married to Jen, 21 years. We have five children uh, that we have homeschooled all the way, starting in kindergarten. Uh, Our oldest is now a sophomore in high school, and and our youngest is six, kind of spaced every two years in between there. Uh, Pastor for about 20 years, uh, stepped out a few years ago, and I serve with a parachurch called Renew a Nation, where we help children develop a biblical worldview through any and all means. So parenting, grandparenting, homeschooling, uh, the church world as well. Um, and so lots of various means. Uh, but, uh, but of course, uh, we are in the throes of it with everybody else homeschooling. And I, I, you know, I can't think of a better decision that we made for our kids' education than homeschooling. It's just been such a blessing for us. Yeah. It's because it's so easy, right? (laughs) Yeah, right. Uh, But hey, we're together a lot when so many other families just separate and uh, just gives us the opportunity to do uh, what we're talking about today in a different capacity than a lot of families uh, have an opportunity to do. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, um, 
you know, it's kind of funny because I, I'm, I, I hesitate because I want to say to our audience, you know, I, I joke with them that they need to have a schoolhouse rocked bank account. This is one of those times I'm telling you guys, you are going to want to dig into this schoolhouse rocked bank account. And I don't say that because I just want you to go spend money on this new book, but I want to say, I have read a lot of parenting books and I have interviewed a lot of people who have written excellent parenting books. And this book is called 50 Things Every Child Needs to Know Before Leaving Home, Raising Children to Godly Adults. And it's the most unique parenting book. And I don't even want to say parenting book because it, it, it is a parenting book, but it isn't a parenting book. It is such a unique book that I think is so desperately needed for families today. And so we're going to talk about this and, and I'll give you, well, actually, you know what, instead of me giving you an overview, I'm going to let the author of the book, that would probably be better, um, give you a, a brief overview of what this book is about. And then we are going to dig in and, and I, I'm not saying this like this is a big commercial for this. It's, it's really the topic that we're talking about because I think it's so very important for us to pay attention to this. So Josh, give us an overview of the book and then we're going to dig into it. Yeah. So uh, the, the first section really looks at helping us capture a biblical vision for what we're trying to accomplish with our kids. And if we don't get that right, of course, all the details kind of flow from that. Um, and what we've seen, um, especially in my years as a pastor, is that um, all of us have priorities. Uh, we all have things that we think are the, the most important to us. And, and if I, you know, if we sat down and I would say to you as a parent, like, what do you want the most for your kids that you're trying to accomplish that, you know, you're, you're like, this is my dream for them. You know, I, I would imagine most parents would say something about their love for Jesus Christ. They're serving mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, and that, I think, you know, that gets at the heart of what we are truly trying to accomplish. What I've ended up seeing, though, as a pastor, is that oftentimes our practices, what we do on the daily basis, don't always line up with our priorities. So we say one thing, but then we end up doing another, and they, they take us in a different direction. Uh, so the first chunk of the book really helps us to uh, really to assess, to look at, are there other priorities that have snuck into our home that really are taking us down a path that will get us somewhere we don't really intend or want to end up with a child. And um, and these really are just different idols that come into our home. We wouldn't call them that as parents, but, um, but that's the first chunk. And then really the heart of the book um, helps a parent um, really capture and create a discipleship plan for their children. It's a customized one that they create. So we've listed out 50 things. Um, some of them are biblical principles that are non-negotiables. Others of them are just preference issues that we were like, okay, we think this is pretty important, uh, but you know, you don't have, you know, we don't have to do it. Uh, it's not a requirement from God. Um, so there can be some customizability there, but what it really does is it helps us see not only the big picture, but then put some intentionality to what we're doing on a regular basis. And so I like to say we try to move from Christian parenting to intentional Christian parenting mm -hmm. and that intentionality of really what are we working on over the next six to 12 months with each of our children, whatever age and stage uh, becomes pretty helpful. Um, so we, you know, there's a section in the back that helps uh, parents just uh, ask some questions of what they're doing and have conversations uh, and we have found that a lot of times, you know, we're we're so busy doing the work of parenting that we don't stop and actually assess and discuss. And um, it, and we part of what we do with this book, my wife and I speak pretty regularly about it. And we have a time in there where couples can just discuss using some of the questions in the back. And many times they'll come up and say, that was the most helpful thing. Like we just haven't done that for quite a long yeah. time. And so it's a self-guided kind of deal. Yeah. So you talk about intentionality and that's the thing I like most about this book is that as Christian parents, you know, we, th th this book has been hugely impactful to me already and I'm still reading through it, but as Christian parents, we do want Christ for our kids. 
That is the ultimate goal. Like you said, the ultimate goal for our kids is that when they die, they will get to spend eternity worshiping at the feet of Jesus, you know, and that they will spend their life serving him, right? It's all about Jesus. And we talk about that on the podcast all the time. The whole point of homeschooling, the whole point of family discipleship, the whole point of raising our kids is to raise our kids with Christ-like character, point them to Jesus so that they'll serve him and get to enjoy him forever, right? But this, this goes beyond the just, here's how to be a Christian. Here's how to, how to function as a Christian parent, you know, and here are the whys. It goes into the planning, you know, you hear the saying, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail. Mm -hmm. And I think that really hits home with this book, because if we don't, if we're not intentional about how we plan out our kids upbringing, it does just pass us by. And it's easy to just get caught kind of in the rut of everyday life, just going about our day and not that our day is bad and not that we're doing it wrong. But you're talking in this book about very specific goals that we have for our children. And you have a really interesting story at the beginning of the book about what your parents did with you and kind of how this book came to be. So we're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts, and we say, this is what you do, step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Josh Mulvahill, and we are talking about his new book. It's called 50 Things Every Child Needs to Know Before Leaving Home, Raising Children to Godly Adults. And it's really a plan book. It's basically a kind of a blueprint book, if you will, of what we want for our kids once our kids leave our home. What is it that we want them to have accomplished? What is it that we want them to have accomplished physically, spiritually, um, emotionally, all the things, right, that we desire for our children. And then it gives us the roadmap on how to get there with our kids. And so your parents did something really interesting with you. And I would love for you to tell this story because it really does kind of launch this book into what it is. So when I was 17, uh, the, the, after I graduated or after my junior year of high school, so in between um, the summer of junior and senior high, year of high school, my parents invited me out to breakfast and uh, I'm the oldest of four. So wasn't sure why am I in trouble? What's going on? Um, that was pretty rare for our family to go out to eat. We were uh, my parents were in full-time ministry, so they were on a pretty tight budget and uh, oldest of four. But we, uh, we went out to breakfast and my parents slid a piece of paper across the table and uh, they said to me, Josh, is there anything on this list that you feel like we haven't accomplished in your life up to this point? And what they essentially were doing was inviting me to, um, to assess their parenting. And on that list, I looked at it and it was you know, my childhood and my teen years flashed before my eyes and there were check marks and dates on there as they had uh, in their, you know, in their mind accomplished different things. And there were all sorts of things with character qualities and spiritual study habits, tools, um, prayer and Bible study kinds of things. And um, there were life skills that they thought were important and uh, manners and how to shake a hand and all kinds of things like that. And I do remember saying to them, I saw a uh, small engine repair on the list and <laughs> said, uh, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's not me. So they crossed it off uh, graciously. Um, but essentially uh, that was what they had used to help plan and set their goals. And they would go away about once a year and they would uh, each four of our kids go, okay, what did we do? And what do we need to be doing working on this next year? And they would, uh, would systematically work through things like that. And they did that for uh, for their, their parenting years. And so they were, you know, as a almost a senior, they were they wanted to put the finishing touches before they launched me into adulthood. And, uh, you know, that kind of carried over for my wife and I into 
uh, into our years as parents and uh, provided a, a helpful model for us just in planning and intentionality. And I think you're right, Yvette, that uh, you know, a lot of us, we have plans and goals for areas of life that we think are important, whether that's career, whether that's finances. Uh, if, if we build a house, we'll have, you know, we'll have an architectural plan. Uh, but many of us haven't thought about the need for that in our parenting world yeah. and put some goals out there. Um, but even more so, you know, just something simple. What am I working on with my We've got a nine-year-old son. What are we? What are we working on with John this year? That's it's important for where he's at. And doubt, you know, that one or two things really helps us become intentional in our days with John. That okay, well, we're gonna find some resources. We're gonna have some conversations. We're gonna build some things around that. Uh, as uh, and, uh, and that that just helps us move the ball forward with them. Yeah, that's so fun. Did you have any idea that your parents had this list that existed as a child or, you know, I mean, obviously you knew they went away once a year, but did you know that they were going away and planning no. how they were going yeah. to, you know, intentionally raise you for that next year and your siblings? No, but I, you know, I look at it and I remember doing a lot of the stuff still today. I remember the, the two weeks my mom spent with us on manners and how to set a you know how to set a table where the where the uh, you know the, the fork and knife went and how you sit properly and where mm -hmm. what you do with your nap you know I remember all that and I remember um, my dad walked up to me and said Josh I want to study a book of the Bible with you um, this was when I was a teen and he said pick your book uh, and I said Revelation oh, and I remember his eyes got all big uh, <laughs> you but, chose the easy one <laughs> yeah well hey as a, as a teen that sounded fun to me uh, but he then utilized some Bible study tools to help me learn how to study the Bible using wow. the book of Revelation and um, but you know there was never like we're you know we're doing all this this is you know, we want this to happen. It was right. just part of, part of our days. Um, so yeah, it was uh, yeah. just part of our childhood. Yeah. And it's not that our children are robots and we have this big checklist that we need to check off. And once we check all the boxes, we're done, we're good. Our parenting years are over, right? It's just that you have to have, you, you, and you talk about this in the book, is that we have to have the end goal in mind, right? Mm -hmm. With anything that we do, whether it's homeschooling, parenting, a job, anything. I, I'm a big list person. I love checklists. Sometimes I will make a checklist if things that I've already done because it feels so good to just put that check mark next to it. <laughs> I know that's super weird, but yeah. I love checklists and I love, um, I love making spreadsheets and things like that. And so it's interesting because as I was, when I first picked up this book, I, I didn't really know exactly what it was. And as I've been reading it, I'm just thinking, man, this is huge. Like this is such an important tool to have as a parent because we need a parenting plan. And you talk about that in the first part of this book. And so with, with once we kind of have our parenting plan, right, we figure out what it, what we're going to do. Talk about parenting success. You talk in the book about what is parenting success. How would you define parenting success once our kids leave our home? Yeah, so obviously the Bible is going to dictate that for us. Um, and so parenting success um, simply is being faithful to do what God's asked us to do in his word as parents. Um, one of my favorite, favorite passages is Psalm 78. And I think that gets at uh, it really answers the question, what is success? So I'll, I'll just read a couple verses um, and you can probably pick out what God starts to say here. So it says, he, I'll starting in verse four of uh, Psalm 78, it says, we will not hide them from their children, uh, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done. Uh, so there, by the way, is a method to pass on faith. We tell all about yeah. the glorious nature and character of God. Uh, and it says he established a testimony in Jacob. So part of our telling our testimony is one of, that, of those methods. He pointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children. Um, and you'll notice there's four generations that I'll read that uh, we are to have a, this isn't just help us capture a, a biblical vision for our kids. It literally is multi-generational. So mm -hmm. see if you can uh, pick this out to teach to their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise to the, tell them to their children. And then here's what uh, God defines as parenting success. So that, so we do all these things so that 
They should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. So hope is salvation language and keep his commandments, obviously obedience. Uh, and you kind of get glimpses of the great commission with that, teach them to obey all that I have commanded, um, which is why this is really that the heart of parenting is really about discipleship, uh, that Amen. you kind of see that language there. Um, but salvation and obedience um, is, is kind of at the heart of what we're aiming for with our kids. Yeah. Uh, that's not groundbreaking, right. uh, but, but the reality is oftentimes there are things that sneak into our world that we start to say yes to or pursue that don't allow us to really accomplish that outcome. And so whether it's our kids are busy with sports and activities, whether it's, um, you know, we could go through the list if sure. you want, um, but they, they take us down the path away from that. Yeah. Yeah. We are out of time for this episode. I have so many questions for you and so much I want to talk about, but um, we don't have time <laughs> today. So we're going to be back on Wednesday, as we always are. We will be back on Wednesday to continue this conversation. Um, you guys, you must get a hold of this book. Again, it's called 50 Things Every Child Needs to Know Before Leaving Home, Raising Children to Godly Adults. It is one of the most important books that you could possibly get on parenting. I truly believe that there are so many great parenting books out there. This one is it's a, a book of a different type. Um, it is a true uh, help for, for planning a blueprint for your kids and raising them up. And we're going to continue talking about all of the aspects of this book. Josh, tell people where they can find out more about you and where they can find this book. Uh, two things, uh, renewanation.org, uh, all one word, is uh, the organization that I serve with, and you can find out a ton there. Uh, I also have a blog at gospelshapedfamily.com. So both of those will take you to areas with me. Okay. I will put those links in the show notes and we will have links um, to the book in the show notes as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will be back on Wednesday to talk more about this book. Uh, you guys, if you have not yet watched the movie Schoolhouse Rock to the Homeschool Revolution, Josh has seen it, right? It's fantastic. 10 out of 10. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely I did not pay it. him to say that. No, she didn't. It's very good. Yeah. Thank you. All by God's grace. So I know... Uh, Dr. Dr. Mulvihill, Dr. Josh and his family watched it um, some time ago and um, they were blessed by it. I know that you will be too. If you have not yet seen it, go to schoolhouserocked.com. You can get all the details there on how to watch the film. We have been blown away by the response that we're getting from it. It is truly impacting lives, you guys, um, all by God's grace. It, it truly uh, just amazes us what God's doing through this movie. That was our greatest prayer in making it. That was our greatest prayer in, in releasing this movie. And it has been a great encouragement just to know that God really is using Schoolhouse Rocked to impact um, lives for him. So if you've not yet seen it, go to schoolhouserocked.com, get all the details there so you can watch it. Also, if you have not yet left a review for the podcast, please do that. We would really appreciate it. It helps to get the word out. It moves us up in that weird algorithm that iTunes has. Um, the more reviews we have, the more people will hear, hear about Schoolhouse Rocked and homeschooling and the gospel and all the things that we talk about here. So watch the movie, share the podcast, leave a review. We would love that. Have a great rest of your day. We will see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Often when I speak and I talk about the need to equip ourselves with a biblical worldview, and, I, and I'll mention to my audience that we got to recognize that around 90% of kids from church homes go to the public schools. And in those public schools, in a real sense, secularism, naturalism, atheism is the new religion of that system. The system itself is inherently atheistic because the system itself assumes right up front, that you don't need God to explain anything, that you can explain all things, biology, anthropology, astronomy, mathematics, uh, everything without God, without the Bible. That is the religion of humanism, naturalism, atheism. And for so many Christian parents, when we send our kids to that system, they're there for almost 40 hours a week, nine months out of the year, uh, and they're getting really hit with this atheistic worldview and all the reasons really the atheist worldview must be true, and if that's true, then the Bible can't be true.